in the last two sessions we were discussing about the first silo theorem and second silo theorem and their proofs in this session we discuss about the third silo theorem and its proof let us see what is the statement of third silo theorem here we are assuming g is a finite group and p is a prime number which divides the order of g then the number of silo p subgroups is congruent to one mod p and that number divides order of g that means here we need to show two things one is the number of silo p subgroup is congruent to one mod p means the number of silo p subgroup is equal to one plus p times something and that number that means one plus p times something which divides order of the group let us see the proof of this theorem so we assume g is a group of order p raised to r m where p does not divide some that means p and m are co prime let p be a silo p sub group of g so then definitely order of the group is equal to p raised to r let s is equal to set of all distinct silo p sub groups of g so let this silo p sub groups be p is equal to p1 p2 p3 etc pk that means there are k distinct silo p sub groups are there consider the addition of p on s by conjugation then s become the union of disjoint orbits let this disjoint orbits are represented by the silo p sub groups p is equal to p1 p2 etc pr in p so this is after renumbering so therefore since s is the union of these disjoint orbits the number of elements in s is equal to sum of the number of elements in each orbit but by definition p is equal to p1 so what is orbit of p1 so orbit of p1 and orbit of p are same because p is equal to p1 and which is same as those element in s that means pt in s such that hp x inverse is equal to pt that means pt is conjugate to p where x is in p so that means that you are taking all hp x inverse where x is in p because x is in p and therefore hp x inverse is equal to p itself therefore the orbit of p1 which contains only p therefore the number of elements in this orbit is equal to 1 so now you take some pt which is not equal to p1 therefore that means that p1 and pt are two distinct silo p subgroups of g then by the definition stabilizer of pt or pi is equal to set of all g in p such that g pi g inverse is equal to pi that means stabilizer of pi means what those elements in p which fits as pi under conjugation that means that stabilizer of pi is equal to set of all g is in p such that g belongs to normalizer of pi which is same as p intersection normalizer of pi therefore the number of elements in the orbit of pi is equal to index of stabilizer of pi in p which is same as index of p intersection normalizer of pi in p 
Since orbit of P I divides the order of the group, that means here it is order of P, index of P intersection N of P I in P divides order of P and order of P is P raised to R. So therefore, the, the choices of the, the possible values of index of P intersection N of P I in P are 1, P, P square, etc., P raised to R. So what will happen if this value or this index is equal to 1? That means if index of P intersection N of P I in P is equal to 1, then the number of elements in P and the number of elements in P intersection normalizer of P I are same. But we know that P intersection N of P I is a subset of P. And both of them have in the same number of elements. So therefore, both the set will be same. That means P intersection normalizer of P I equal to P. This means that P is a subset of N of P I. So the, but that means that P is a subgroup of N of P I. So, but we have the natural canonical homomorphism. It's a projection map pi from n of pi to n of pi mod pi. So, since p is a subset of n of pi, we can restrict this homomorphism to p. Therefore, we get a homomorphism pi from p to normalizer of pi mod pi which is given by pi of x is equal to xpi, where x is in p. But order of p is equal to p raised to r. Therefore, every non-identity element in p has order uh, some power of p. So, but the number, uh, the order of pi is equal to p raised to r because PI is also a slope of group. So which means that P never divides the quotient, the order of the quotient group N of PI mod PI because PI is contained in N of PI and uh, order of PI is equal to P raised to R. So there is no factor remains or terms in P remains in this uh, order. Therefore, P never divides the order of n of pi mod pi. Therefore, this group, the quotient group, does not have an element of order p. That means no element in the quotient group n of pi mod pi has a power of p. So therefore, every element in p that has order equal to some power of p that means every element, every non-identity element of P that will be maps to identity element of the quotient group. Why it is so? Because under any homomorphism, order of the image of an element divides order of that element. So therefore this is possible because the Cauchion group N of PI mod PI does not have an element of order P. So every element in order P or a power of P in P maps to identity element, no other choice. So since identity element in P also maps to identity element in the homomorphism, under this homomorphism, so we can conclude that every element in P which will be mapped onto identity element of N of PI mod PI. That means for all x is in P, x pi is equal to pi. That means that x belongs to pi. That means p is a subset of pi. So therefore, p is a subgroup of pi. But the number of elements in pi and pi are same, which is same as p raised to r, because both of them are slopes subgroups which is not possible because we assume that P is not equal to PI. So that means that the number of elements in this index or the index of 
P intersection N of PI more in P which is not equal to 1. That means that and which is a divisor of order of P. So therefore P must divide index of P intersection N of PI in P. That means that P divides number of elements in the orbit of PI. So, but S is equal to the sum of orbit of P plus all distant, the number of elements in distant orbits. And we have seen that only the orbit of P contains one element and all other elements, all other, for all other orbits, the number of elements in the orbit is divisible by P. Therefore, cardinality of S or the number of elements in S is equal to 1 plus P times something. Say P times S for some S. Therefore, the cardinality of S is congruent to 1 mod P. That means that the number of Silopi subgroups in G is congruent to 1 mod P. Now we have to show the second part. It says that we have to show that then this number must divide order of the group. That means we have to show that the number of Silopi subgroups in G divides order of the group. Or because S is equal to set of all Silopi subgroups, it is enough to show that the cardinality of S divides order of G. Suppose G adds on S by conjugation. By second silo theorem, we know that all silo P subgroups are conjugates. Therefore, under this action, there is only one orbit. That means that if P in S, then the number of elements in S is equal to the number of elements in the orbit of P because S contains only one orbit because everyone is conjugate. And this number is same as index of normalizer of P in G. But the normalizer of the index of N of P in G divides order of G. This means that the cardinality of S also divides order of G. That means that the number of Silopi subgroups of a finite group must divide the order of the group. That is the end of the proof of silo the third silo theorem. In the next session, we discuss about the applications of silo theorems. Thank you.